Hi gang, this is a neat heat engine that uses the curry temperature or curry point and ferromagnetism to get rotation. I'll show you how I made it along with demonstrations along the way and an explanation of how it works. Here's how I made it. I start with this old hair dryer. The heating wires inside are often nichrome wires, possibly 80% nickel and 20% chromium. A test with a hard drive magnet shows that it's at least attracted to the magnet. I remove a segment of the wire to test. Before heating it up, it's attracted to the magnet. Then, when it's hot enough, it's no longer attracted. It quickly cools down and is attracted again. That behavior means I should be able to use it to make a curry temperature motor. The first thing I need to make is this copper support structure. I cut three pieces of copper with a notch in one end, along with a copper wire for a center shaft. I hold that all together with the help of a piece of wood while I solder it all. And here's the resulting support structure. I then stretch out enough nichrome wire from the hair dryer to make three circles. I wind the circles of wire through the notches. And here's the resulting rotor. For the stator, I made this thing out of wood and metal. I'd put small dimples which the rotor sits in. As you see, it spins fairly freely. For the magnet, I stuck two neodymium hard drive magnets to a bent piece of metal. I assemble all the parts and test it. As you can see, it sticks a bit in places, but it works. I then get out the propane torch. With the added thermal energy, it works even better. But the magnetic attraction separates out the wires like this, making the rotation uneven. So I wrap the wires together with loops of copper wire, getting something a little more uniform. I try again. This time I get smoother rotation. How does it work? Like all materials, the nickel in the wire is made up of atoms. The atoms it's made up of act as tiny magnets, mostly due to electron spin. But we'll just think of the whole atoms as magnets. Another term for these tiny magnets is dipoles. In nickel, these tiny magnets are grouped into domains. Each domain is a group of tiny magnets, all pointing in the same direction. But notice that the magnets of different domains point in different directions. That's why nickel doesn't normally act like a magnet. But when we put it in the magnetic field of a permanent magnet, the atoms in the domains now point in the same direction, lining up with the magnetic field. Now the nickel behaves like a magnet as a whole, and is attracted to our permanent magnet. We call a material that behaves like this a ferromagnetic material. But this part of the ring gets heated by the flame. That heats up the atoms in the nickel. What that means is that the atoms start to move around randomly. And at a certain temperature, called the Curry temperature, the tiny magnets all of a sudden all point in different directions. They aren't even grouped into domains anymore. But that means this part of the ring is attracted to the magnet, while this part isn't. The force is unbalanced, and so the ring rotates in this direction. The section now in the flame is cool at first, but, like before, it heats up, causing the tiny magnets to reach the Curry temperature, and this section to no longer be attracted to the permanent magnet, and the ring rotates again and so on. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, Rimstar Org, for more neat videos like this. That includes one about a much simpler to make curry temperature experiment, another where I add ion propulsion to a Star Trek Enterprise model, and an experiment to test which boils faster, hot or cold water. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question or comment below. See you in a bit.